Hi guys, Jared here, and this video is going to be a unique one in the sense that I'm going to talk about a couple of things that, well, I want your opinion on. The retro scene sort of exploded, um, what, maybe five years ago? It, uh, it It's really come back, like... I mean, th it, this is normal, right? People hit a certain age, they get nostalgic, and then they, they crave for those uh, days when they were younger. And that's happened a lot, like I said, in the last like five, five to ten years. But there's been some clear, you know, um, clear things that have really made an impact on the retro scene. For example, YouTube, where you're watching this video right now, uh, is one of those things, but I wanted to hear, like, from from your perspective, what did you, what do you feel has really made an impact on why the retro scene has sort of exploded, and not just collecting, for example, like like NES games, SNES games, Genesis games, things like that. That's one aspect to it, but there's another aspect, and that's the revival of uh, retro systems like this. This is Neo XYX for the um, Sega Dreamcast. Now, if you don't know this, um, this isn't actually wasn't actually created for the Dreamcast. This was created for the Neo Geo. And take the Neo Geo as an example. That system has received brand new games from independent uh, sources for quite some time now. And like, why is that? Why, why is it that suddenly, like, everything old is new again? And like I said, I mean, there are some, some clear, you know, reasons why, like YouTube, people look and they're like, oh, wow, I never, I never even knew this game existed or, or you know, or what have you. But I, I wanted to know, what did you guys think of, um, of this? Like, why, why is it that retro suddenly is, is, is there? Why is it that all these independent companies now are really really like pushing these old systems like for example if, if there's one game you've got to try is this Sturmwind on the uh of uh, the genesis on the genesis on the um dreamcast is just is incredible it's one of the best games uh ever made on the sega dreamcast and that that's unbelievable you know like that's that's just incredible it blows my mind and then you've got all these different releases on the Dreamcast, Dux, Redux, and Neo XYX. Um, and I've actually got brand new uh, Neo Geo games coming in. And, and like, it's nuts. It's, it's absolutely crazy if you really stop and think about it. How, you know, these, some of these platforms are 20 plus years old. And yet they continue to deliver really fun and engaging experiences. And people are willing to pay for it. I mean, you look today, a brand new release will cost $59.99, right? But then you'll go and you'll get, you'll get games like this, which will be like $65 to $80. That's a lot of money. Um, you can get releases like, whoops, almost dropped that, like this for, I, I don't know, uh, this was sent to us uh, as a review unit, so I'm not sure how much of these actually go for, but I think they're like 45 uh, euros, which again, that's a lot of money, and, and it's a six level arcade shmup, and you, you know, like people, people buy this to the point where it's sold out, the Neo Geo releases, okay, those are hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Now, I know at first you you probably, most people are like, what, hundreds of dollars for a single game? That's just insane. But it's not. It's not really insane when you think of, you can't just burn a disc for the Neo Geo, right? You actually have to go. You have to get the motherboards made. Um, you've got the custom plastic shells and stuff like that. We're talking, that's that's not cheap. That's hundreds of dollars to to do all of that. And like every Neo Geo game that I've seen that's been released in the last 20 years, uh, well, 20 years, uh, since about 2000, well, goodness, 14 years now, Whew, crazy time. Um, but anyways, all of those games, they sell out instantly. Like if you're not there on that day with like uh, $800 in hand or, or whatever, because usually um, the big ones come from NG Dev Team, and I believe they're between five and 700 euros. That's a lot of money. 
Um, but if you're not there, like within the first, you know, week or something like that to plunk down your cash for your pre-order, it's over. You you will not get a chance again to purchase those games. Now, thankfully uh, for that particular company, they do periodic runs of reprint, reprints. Um, and they actually have their last one coming up. I believe they said they're going to put them on sale in April or something like that. But think of that. People are willing to spend almost $1,000 on an individual game just to rekindle that arcade experience because there's no such thing as arcades anymore. And I think a lot of, um, for Neo Geo in particular, I think a lot of the reasoning behind why you would spend so much money for these games is because of that. It's it's just to to sort of like just go back to the old days of when games were just a lot more simplistic. You only had a couple of buttons and it was just your skill that made you uh, progress through the game. You didn't you didn't have hand holding and and all of this. Um in terms of all of these releases like for like Redux for example, like a game like this why on the Sega Dreamcast and and like what's what's the thing? Well, I think it's just a natural love of the platform. I think the developers just really enjoyed working with it. And clearly there's some money to be made if these things sell out like instantly. And then like this, this one, Sturmwind, this was um this was just a project of love. Uh this this guy had worked on this game for for God, what? It was almost like a decade or something. So there are a lot of different factors that that weigh in when when looking at why the retro scene is sort of come back and and i'm not even really talking so much about the retro scene as i am the independent scene but the retro in general um it's it's back like like it's never been before look at the prices on ebay of uh, older titles it's unbelievable how expensive they they're they're skyrocketing up the um the the Super Nintendo, the NES, these these systems are slowly but surely becoming just like you can't collect for them anymore because they're just it's incredible how expensive the 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 games are now because the demand is there and there's just there's no more supply. So I I think that's good enough. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the retro scene, um, focusing in on some of those newer releases. Um, there's even a brand new Super Famicom game that was uh, just, well, I'm not sure if it's just been released or not, but I don't want to talk too much about that because I'm actually looking into purchasing that. Um, but yeah, why do you think? Why do you think the, the retro scene is alive and well? How is it that, you know, like these these indie developers are able to to make these games and they sell out instantly? What's the what's the appeal to you? Why 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 do you 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 go to retro consoles as opposed to just uh, you know playing on your PlayStation 4, your Xbox One, or your Wii U? Obviously, there's uh, there's something there. There's some 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 draw, and uh, I'd love to hear what what it is for you. Why is the retro scene um, like alive and like just flourishing? So by all means, leave a comment and let me know and maybe we can get a nice little back and forth going. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I'll be back soon.